Hello, everyone. Welcome back from break. My name is Matthew Romain. I am a partner at Shizen Capital. Uh, and if you've been following a bit of Japan's sort of venture ecosystem recently, uh, you may have seen some research uh, that the cabinet office has put out. And some of that research has been backed by our next speaker, Victor Mulas. Uh, so I've gotten to know Victor over the past couple of years because my fund actually works fairly closely with METI, uh, Ministry of Economy, Trade and Infrastructure, because we provide tax breaks for our LPs. Uh, and so it's with great pleasure uh, that I get to introduce Victor because uh, he's going to share with you some of the thinking uh, that the government's been putting into in uh, sponsoring and, and supporting the innovation economy here. So he's Victor. Well, hello everyone, and first of all, thank you uh, to the organizers for the invitation uh, to speak today. Um, what I'm going to talk today is a little bit about the policies that are happening in Japan. Um, I'm not speaking on behalf of the government. I'm not a representative of the government. This is my view as an advisor. Um, and the perspective that I can bring to you being advising in the cabinet office, Tokyo Metropolitan Government and Sibuya Government. Um, so I hope this is useful for you. And after that, I think that we have a Q&A with Matt, but uh, feel free to ask questions spe specifically if you want to understand a little bit more about the, the context of any of the things that I explain. So... So Matt was asking me to give you an overview of the policies that are here. Um, it will be uh, very high level, and we can get into the details in particular of what you are interested in later. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. There are two lines. This is like the TV. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Um, so the first thing you're going to see is something that is called the Japan Five-Year Startup Plan. And probably you hear about that, but that was in uh, in 2022, at the beginning of 2022. And it was a very important document because it put together uh, all the policies from the central government to align uh, all the ministries, uh, the administration, but the whole economy. So the way in Japan this works is you need kind of a signal, a vision to start mobilizing all the stakeholders. And that's what happened with that launch of the plan. Um, it was launched by Prime Minister Kishida, and it was launched in CAC Tokyo, which is probably the, the largest uh, hub of startups that you have in Japan. You have around 300 startups being there. So that plan sets very clear signal and targets and very ambitious objectives. They want to increase investment by 10 times, uh, realize 100 unicorns, and do 100,000 startups. Um, those are just numbers, but what is important is the signal, where they want to go. They know they are not there yet, and they want to mobilize everyone. Um, the second part is they are doing a comprehensive approach. They know very well what are the areas that they need to improve. Um, there was a lot of analysis in the previous year for around almost three years, looking at the uh, ecosystem, comparing it internationally, uh, looking at areas where they could um, improve and how. And then they decide to attack in every front. So we have three main blocks. Um, they will call them talent and networks, you will see, but that's human resources and basically on the entrepreneurial side because it's the area that is missing a little bit more. Um, it's also on the funding and exits. And it that's something that will be of your interest because it goes into the VC uh, industry uh, and the investment too, but also the exits. How do you exit and get more profitable? And then something they call open innovation. You, you need to understand that as involvement of the corporate Japan and all the corporations that are here. Um, now, just for your context, Japan is the uh, third, fourth largest economy of the world if you count the EU as a whole. Um, and it's one that has uh, the third largest of multinational corporations in the world. So there is a lot of capital in the corporate Japan and it hasn't been unleashed yet to the startup ecosystem. So that's one of the things that are there. OK. So as you see, they are trying to mobilize every part of the economy. And the signal goes to all the ministries. So the cabinet office, think about it as the White House for you. It's an overarching entity that sets the policy framework and then start uh, asking ministries to implement. So on talent and networks, 
Uh, these are the the areas. There are many small details, but these are just high areas just to give you a sense. The first thing they are aiming at is general education. They're trying to basically change the mindset, but also the structure of general education to become more mentor-based and more innovation-based. That means more hands-on training, starting in elementary school, junior high, and high school. That's the vision. How it's being implemented is little by little. So you will see little programs. But the vision is a restructuring of the education, going more entrepreneurial. Uh, so that's a long-term commitment, and that's where they are going to. Um, the second part is in the universities and research institutes. Japan has among the best R&D of the world, and it doesn't get commercialized as much as in other countries. Um, if you look at the uh, science and technology clusters of the world, that's a ranking that WIPO, the World International Property Organization, does. Uh, Japan has the largest one, which is the Tokyo one, and the fifth largest one, which is the Osaka, Kansai area. Uh, that's in terms of production of quality patents and quality papers. It's not the number of, because if not, China will win. It's the quality, and then it gets used. Um, so the research institutes, the universities have a lot of that, but it's not getting commercialized. So there are three big initiatives there for you to know. The first one is a massive university fund. That's around, they call it the 100 billion uh, gen uh, fund. Uh, so that's a massive amount of money that goes to the universities. And the goal is to reform the university completely and to make it more uh, uh, commercially focused uh, and innovation focused, uh, but looking internationally. So this program aims to, to change completely the universities and usually uh, also giving them an endowment to work more like the American ones. And that's very complicated, right? But they are doing this through this massive fund. Out of the universities that apply for this fund, they apply 10, the top 10 uh, of the country. Um, there were at least seven of them were top, and then you have three more. Um, the decision went to give the first funding to Tohoku University in Sendai. And it's probably not the choice you would think in your mind. You would think uh, Tokyo University or Kyoto University. They, those two lost. Only Tohoku got it. And if you see uh, the news about this, the interesting thing is the panel chose Tohoku because it was the most ambitious one to reform everything in their university, including education. That's a massive reform for a university uh, in Japan. And make it more practical-oriented, innovation-based education. So that is where they are going. They are trying to completely change how the education is done to make it more innovation prone. They know they are missing those skills and they are bringing them. It will take time, but it's starting. Um, the other element is uh, the Global Startup Campus. You may have seen the announcement in the G7 uh, together Prime Minister Kishida with um, President Biden. And they talk about a concept of a Global Startup Campus which MIT is helping in the concept design right now uh, to base it here in Tokyo. And that's for top researchers of every university to be able to work together with um, global universities that are champions of commercialization, like MIT uh, or others you can think about, and be able to directly commercialize and start creating mentors with all the top research of Japan. And that would be Sir. Uh, research together and share commercialization to learn and after that to spread throughout all the universities of, of Japan. Any university can come and leverage this uh, platform. Um, so that's the concept that they put out there and this is in the making. Again, it will take time but it's coming. And then they have a, a, a big initiative of commercialization and training to all the universities to commercialize at the scale the research that they have and improve those capabilities. The the last pillar is uh, on entrepreneurs and investors, and they know they need to increase more the existing talent. So things that they are doing is they are um, they started by bringing accelerators uh, to Japan because they didn't have too many of the uh, uh, global accelerators here. So there was no good uh, training that would know how to do this globally. And um, they were very successful. That was started by Jetro, actually. And, and a big kudos to, to Jetro uh, for that program. 
really work very well at attracting a lot of those accelerators. And right now, after three years, we have two or three that are thinking of setting office here or are expanding, like uh, Plug and Play, was already here, but you have tech stars that already came, uh, Alchemist that also came with this program. Um, yeah, you have Skydeck from Berkeley. So very interesting players that I started to consider and learn about Japan and expanding potentially working with Japanese entrepreneurs here. So this is something that has been in the making and probably you will see more. Um, the other thing you are starting to see is inbound and outbound of talent. And this is for entrepreneurs. Uh, JSTAR X is a program from METI and they are going to all those ecosystems. In the US, you have East Coast, uh, West Coast. Uh, East Coast is primarily Boston for biotech because Japan is very strong on that. Um, but they, what, what they are doing is just to start taking entrepreneurs and not giving them just a tool, giving them a training of how do they access uh, funding, how do they access uh, um, the market of those destinations. Uh, so it's a longer term program, but you will start seeing how this starts scale, scaling, scaling, sorry. Um, and the other thing is to bring talent uh, from outside to, to Japan. This is not only for entrepreneurs, it's also for VCs. There is a conscious uh, understanding that the VC industry here has been very local at the scale, and it needs, a scale, it needs the skills of talent to be able to um, invest more with a commercial mindset. So there will be also training on those kind of fellows. Uh, and on that, um, if you are interested, uh, please let me know because we'll be very interested in connecting you with the folks that are working on this to start uh, training Japanese talent and, and facilitate entry of this to Japan. Okay, and uh, now in funding, uh, there are many things that are happening. and. Probably you haven't seen the effects yet. They are starting to happen, but the things are happening in the background. The first one is about expanding LP investment. Um, there's a lot of funding that Japan has, especially in the pension fund. Um, other public funds like GIC, DBJ, or the SME agency, and in corporations. So they're starting to align everybody to do this. For instance, SME agency just has a 200 million fund directly to LP investors in other VCs. Um, corporations are starting to do that. You have SMBC, big announcement, starting to mobilize funds and so on. So what I'm seeing here is a movement. It's starting to happen. A lot of work is in the background, mobilizing everyone to at least more funding into the ecosystem, but with the understanding that it has to be in partnership with the VCs and the uh, investors that know how to do this uh, at a scale. Then there is uh, some policies to facilitate investment and those goes into tax breaks. Uh, there is a QSBS type tax break that was is in the making to be implemented. And you, you can see the announcement. Uh, it's about until $17 million, but you have to reinvest uh, to, to get the tax break on the capital gains. Um, there is the angel say say that uh, Matt talked about and we can give more details later. But basically that one is being reformed to actually go at a scale too. And then there are some VC structural reform in terms of accounting rules to make it more efficient for international investors to operate here in Japan. Um, there is work on the markets and exits. Uh, you we see in some stuff on the IPO and the global uh, on the public markets, uh, but also on secondary market uh, and to allow more for fluidity in secondary market um, and to operate efficiency because Right now, it's very difficult. Uh, so that's also in the making, and probably will will go there out soon. And then you have the stock options and visas. Stock options, the same as secondary market, they exist, but they are very complicated right now. So there's a lot of changes that are happening to facilitate that and make it at the similar standards as the US. Uh, so it start working. And then in visas, this is important for you because it's not only the consideration of having visas for startup owners, also for investors. And that's something uh, some people are working on that, some entities. You will see that at local level because what they do is they leverage a policy tool called a special economic, something like a special economic zone, but for the regulation and allows for this kind of invest, uh, visa to be implemented and pilot um, in regional governments. So you will see that probably with Miyasan uh, of Tokyo that is going to speak about it. Uh, and if not, you have other uh, 
uh, regional governments that will have it. That's coming soon, probably. Okay, so I talked about that. It was a little bit dry, but I wanted to give you an overview of that. Uh, the other thing you will start seeing also is um, uh, the, these policies are a central level, but then they're starting to be implemented also in regional governments and regional hubs. So right now, 78% of the ecosystem is in Tokyo, but the rest of these ecosystems have a lot of potential industry base, but also um, industry specialization. So the government selected four global startup cities where they think they can create global ecosystems. Tokyo, of course, is there, but then you have Central, which is Nagoya area. That's uh, a lot of uh, automobile, but also uh, robotics in that area. A lot of industries R&D are there. Then you have Kansai, which is Osaka, Kyoto and Kobe. A lot of biotech uh, you can find there, but also industries. Uh, Fukuoka, which is called Startup City by their, their major. Um, and they are probably the most uh, open and friendly city for uh, early startups after Shibuya. And then you have four others, which is Sapporo, Sendai, Hiroshima, and Kitakyushu. All of them have a specialization. Like Sapporo will go for space tech and act tech. Uh, Sendai, you have semiconductors. Um, Kitakyushu is robotics. And, and Hiroshima, you have uh, the leverage of uh, a lot of their industry, like Mazda in automobile and also their robotics. Uh, so if you are interested in special domains with the R&D that is coming from Corporate and Research Institute, look at these clusters, because now they're going to get a lot of funding. They've been getting it for two years. They're developing strategies. Now they've learned and are starting to implement at the scale. So you will start seeing startups coming from those areas with very, very strong R&D uh, behind them. And you can check the startup plans online. That's the link if they give you the presentation. Uh, but if not, you can Google. It's not difficult. And then this is what you can see. Uh, Minya-san is going to talk about this later, about Tokyo Metropolitan Government. But every city then starts developing their own plans with their own budget. This is the Tokyo one. Um, but think a little bit about Tokyo. Tokyo is around 40 million inhabitants. My country is Spain. The population of Spain is 40 million. OK, just to give you a sense, this is like a middle country. <laughs> and it has that kind of budget and power. OK, so it's different scale. So a startup plan from this country has the same potential as a middle country. And it goes into that. And they are doing many of the same things in terms of uh, education, uh, bringing scale-up programs and global accelerators here, and, and also facilitating uh, investors. They are also opening procurement, uh, special deregulation areas. Uh, so it makes it easier for uh, a startup investment to happen. Uh, so he will talk more about it probably, but I think Tokyo is a very interesting place. and. You can uh, ask him then the question, but it could be one of the, the areas that could be of your interest because it will go the fastest. And as I said before, around 80% of the ecosystem is there. Um, and then the other thing for you to know is there is a focus on frontier technologies and R&D. Um, and these are a lot of the strategic plans that the government has put in place in the last two, three years, especially the last two years. All of them with a big, strong uh, funding and signal behind it. Uh, the, uh, the space tech plan to bring the startups into space tech. Actually, Japan is getting very good startups scaling up, like Astroscale or GTI. They're getting them in Series B and Series C, uh, competing globally like the best in the world. And that's, that's for this reason. Quantum computing, the strategy is going there with all the research they have, AI, biotech, semiconductor and Web3, where they are doing a lot of reforms to mobilize that sector. So you will see a lot of this coming up, but the focus is these frontier technologies. That's where they become more competitive and where they have uh, better assets to compete. So you will see that every, everything is aligned and it's moving into that direction. Okay, so how that is looking for, and I'm, go, I'm gonna go very fast because someone will talk about it this later, I think. Um, so the good news is investment is growing. Uh, and it has been growing. It's a little bit going down now, but uh, that's normal because of the situation globally. But I want you to focus on the second part. And this is only Tokyo, but it's 80% of the ecosystem, so we work. It's very stable. <laughs> Even when there is a crisis, they go down a little bit, but they go back again. So the trend tends to be much stable than any other ecosystem in Asia. And the reason for that is because there is a lot of domestic capital and corporate supporting the ecosystem. So it, this economy doesn't work so up and down as 
thank you for the presentation, as what you saw before. I don't think here you have the same effect. You have some, but it will continue. So that's a good opportunity while the other markets go down. Um, the second part is around 35 to 40% of startups are regularly R&D startups, hard science startups backed, and with very good science behind them. And that has been stable as the, the ecosystem grew. No matter how it grew, 35, 40%. It goes like that. Um, the other thing you see is it's starting to work in terms of attracting independent investors and foreign investors. These are the, the, the figures that you have until next year. Eight times, 4.2 times, uh, independent and then international VCs. This is continue growing. And thank you for all you coming here. This is just a, an example of what is happening with international VCs. And then this is the last slide. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to understand because this is the reverse. Uh, so this is the difference between the average of the, the funding round and the average of value in Japan. So the number here means uh, it, there is a difference. There is less uh, value in Japan. But what you can see here is that the, the difference is starting to shorter. Uh, now we are in the uh, 15 to 40 million, kind of getting even. And we are seeing more and more rounds. That difference gets smaller. Uh, so it's getting into standards. And what you are seeing is the startups are starting to grow into those sizes of 40 to 100 million. That's where we are right now in the ecosystem. Um, we weren't there like two years ago. We were probably in the four to 15 million. So that's telling you it's maturing. Um, so that's uh, everything on my side. I hope this gave you a good structure of the policies. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Victor. Um, so we have a few minutes and I had a couple questions. Uh, so some of you know, Victor actually came here with uh, the World Bank and you've had a chance to sort of uh, review other ecosystems around the world. Uh, and now uh, you've decided to stay, leave the World Bank and stay in Japan. Um, and so I wanted to hear, uh, is it because of this uh, exciting you know, journey that uh, Japan looks to be on or is it the food? Definitely helps, uh, I would say. Um, I, look, I think uh, one of the reasons, uh, the main reason is the ecosystem, and we talk about that. Um, I started to work with the Japan ecosystem um, like since 2018, at the end of 17, 18. At that time, when I came here to Tokyo, there was basically just uh, plug and play was started, uh, starting at that time. It was the only thing. It was very, very small. Um, and I went all around Japan, uh, uh, was going to Osaka, and it was like, where are the startups? It, it was difficult to find. And the change that we have witnessed since then is amazing. And I think um, I've been uh, very lucky to work with a team uh, at the government that is very passionate. And you are seeing the drive of the whole government and the initiative, and then all the rest of the stakeholders. Uh, so I think a change like that happens in very few uh, countries at the scale that it will happen here and the drive and passion. And I just wanted to contribute to that. And that's the reason I'm here. And trying Fantastic. To awesome. Um, so as you were doing some of this research and really understanding the the uh, Japan's venture ecosystem and, and what tools and, and policies could help, what was sort of uh, uh, like a big surprise? Yeah. Um, so I think the, the surprise for me has been the, the young people, the young talent uh, here in Japan, because when you talk with regular like uh, leaders, they tend to be more age, especially in corporates, and they tend to be more conservative and difficult to, um, to see how much they have the passion and mobilization for that. Sometimes it's frustrating, very frustrating. But when you, you talk with the young guys, the, the ones that are leading the change and the management, even in corporates, leading innovation teams, the way they talk about it is, this is our only chance and our last chance, and we need to fight for it, and we need to change everything. And that drive doesn't stop. I thought, OK, maybe after two years, they get like burned or anything like that. It hasn't happened, and it's growing. Uh, so I think that kind of movement of change was very impressive. And seeing it continuing, that was my, my surprise. Positive, huh? Awesome. And on that note, uh, another round of applause for Victor.
So I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Taizo Son and Taira Atsushi up to the stage. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about what Taizo has been working on, uh, both in the past in investing in startups and companies. Uh, Taizo is a pretty amazing person, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Uh, I just want to have it sit down. Am I okay on the screen here? We're supposed to stay within the green lines, so... I usually tend to stand outside the lines, but uh, Taizo and Taira, thank you guys for joining us today. Yeah, it's my pleasure and honor. Thank you. Absolutely. Working over there? Oh, yeah. Okay. So excited. Great. Um, so I think maybe if we could start off by having a little bit of history, uh, maybe Taizo can tell us... Uh, you know, you've been actively investing in both funds and startups for yep. probably... 20 years? I'm not quite I'm sure. But yeah. yeah, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Still young. Uh, yeah, let me introduce myself briefly. Uh, I'm Taizo. Um, I was born and raised in Japan, and uh, but currently I'm based in Singapore. And uh, uh, last more than two decades uh, um, as an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, and also the uh, the big supporter in I, I call myself a startup enthusiast uh, to, uh, to support younger people, younger entrepreneurs uh, in Japan and Asia. And then, uh, so thanks to the fortune, um, I could, uh, so, so my first career is when I was a, a student of, at Tokyo University, uh, I met a Jerry Yan, the founder of the Yahoo. And then uh, I became a project leader, development project leader of uh, Yahoo Japan. And can you believe it? It's still, even today, Yahoo Japan even search that Yahoo Japan is uh, twice bigger than the Google Japan, and only surviving in 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 this country. Um, Taizo, I think did you actually write some code for Yahoo? Yeah, okay. of course. Any of that uh, still running around? No, I don't think so. <laughs> And then uh, after that, I, I got so inspired uh, uh, by the, the the young young guys from Silicon Valley. And then I started my company uh, in 1996. And then, uh, thanks to the fortune, uh, I could uh, I started the gaming company. And then uh, the I could uh, take uh, that company to the, the Japanese uh, public stock market. And even today, a couple of billion dollars market cap. What was the company again? Uh, Gangho Online Entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. Right. And uh, the, the they developed the, the game called Puzzles and Dragons, uh, and then it, it used to be the uh, the world's number one uh, mobile app uh, in the world. So uh, Tim Cook uh, invited me uh, to to the Apple headquarters uh, with a red carpet, and then. Because uh, uh, together with my brother, Masa, the founder of SoftBank, because uh, at the time, uh, Masa was selling the iPhone as a hardware, as a mobile carrier seller uh, in the world, number one in the world. And then I was the number one app provider at the app store. So, uh, so, so basically, you're the reason your brother got that deal. <laughs> And then people say that, oh, well, oh, we are so influenced by the, your bro uh, the some brothers. So, so we should welcome you guys. And then, then uh, after that, uh, uh, because of the Japanese uh, startup ecosystem is very weak at the time, and then there are very few angel investors, uh, very few venture capitals. Uh, so uh, I started supporting young uh, people. Uh, creating a startup accelerator like a Y Combinator. And then uh, I moved to the Singapore so that, that we can support the, the young entrepreneurs in the world. And then... Uh, Kaiser, wait, you're yep. skipping over a lot there. So how many different startups and funds have you invested in? Uh, currently, we in directly invested to the 150, 60, yeah, 150 stuff. plus uh, 70 VC, you know, 70 50 VC. startups 20, and 70 VC funds, yeah, as a LP. Two, 220 ish investment, and uh, only five people running, yeah, crazy. That's uh, <laughs> that's a little crazy. Uh, by the way, I was one of those funds, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. 500 startups fund one, but uh, we had you as one of our LPs, right. And then uh, maybe uh, 
uh, later that he will explain it in detail, but uh, we recently acquired the SoftBank Ventures Asia. One is, uh, that is one of the investment arms uh, from year 2000 uh, to invest Asian white. Uh, so uh, currently they, they're uh, they, uh, cumulatively, they, they are driving the $2.2 billion funds. Uh, and then, so we acquired that fund because uh, uh, they have a vision fund, a huge one. Did, did you get a good price on that? Because I think you're buying that from someone you know, right? No comment, no comment. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of the largest secondary transactions that uh, we haven't been discussing. Unfortunately, so since uh, we, uh, I'm a brother, so that's why uh, I couldn't get any discount. Oh, come so, on, family discount? Even no, premium. Never. Premium need to pay. I hope you got some good favors uh, for whatever you want. No, no, no. Actually, we never. pay the premium. Oh, oh, punishment. I don't know. I think you got to negotiate a little harder. And then, uh, so, uh, so we are now entering into the new chapter for ourselves. Uh, so he yeah. will explain the, okay. the new strategy about it. So, uh, I'm actually that's excited about by the way. Tyra's son is yeah. also like right hand man for Taizo and has been with him for almost all of that time, right? Yeah, it is. And before that, I worked for uh, every brother. Uh, more than 12 years on the SoftBank, and I was part of uh, Indian strategy and also U.S. strategy and uh, global strategy at the time. And then that was quite hectic, but fun, but a little bit crazy. And then eight years ago, well, we started together, Mesut also. Maybe I'm going to share the backdrop of the uh, what we're doing and also what we are going to do Please. with us, right? Okay, so uh, recently we formed the new firm in Singapore, the Edge of, uh, together, Taizuan and myself, and also one more co-founder uh, from Software Manager Asia. So uh, Taizuan named this, uh, of course, uh, company uh, the Edge of because uh, he loves kind of in between chaos and also order, and we can see innovations, and that's coming from the uh, professor from uh, UC Array, I guess. And so what we are trying to do is that develop the Pan-Asia startup league and ecosystem, including, of course, Japan and Korea and Southeast Asia countries, and also maybe part of India. Um, because uh, Taizo actually, and I found that a very good ecosystem, each country is Japan, of course, Korea, and also each uh, Southeast Asia countries. And then we are talking about, hey, Asia is number one market in the future globally, of course. 50% of GDP is coming from Asian countries. However, we found out also a lot of silos, right? It's Japan silo, Korean silo, and also each country silo because the country, each country have a different culture, different sort of a stage of the economic development. So what, that's why we- What about uh, China? Kind of very big silo lately, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have actually uh, the China fund separately, but separately because uh, it's very hard to mingle at this moment, China and also mm. other countries, that's why. But uh, still, we believe that, you know, the future of China uh, in the future, um, after maybe uh, this a uh, little bit of chaotic, you know, geopolitics. It's still, still big in uh, EV and mobility and AI and yeah, tech, clean tech. And driving clean tech. a top side of a technology for sure. So that's why we cannot ignore, but it cannot mingle at <laughs> this moment uh, because of the many reasons. And then, uh, so uh, Misuto has been focusing on early stage, very early stage. And then that was a kind of premise, right? So when we started, hey, we have done a lot of uh, usual kind of the mainstream investment and also business like uh, gaming and e-commerce. And I was part of Yahoo Japan and internet service. And then the to begin with, okay, bet it's better to try totally opposite side and then Initially, we had no kind of the theme, but only one thing, you know, this is coming from Taizo, of course, you know, making our world better, you know, by startup and innovation. That's one sentence. But at that time, you know, I, when I shared, after I left the SoftBank and I shared uh, that story, you know, many friends, and then, oh, you are now getting out of the business or you're going to philosophy or, you know, kind of an impact. At that time, nobody talking about sustainability or impact or good for the future. <laughs> you know, eight years ago. But now people are talking about it, you know, impact, sustainability, because we need uh, some uh, big changes, social changes through innovation and startup, right? So that's a Misuto story. And then on the other hand, SoftBank has been focusing on later stage. 
and and then also uh, mainstream, right? Commerce and logistics and internet service. So all in all, Mistletoe and Soft and Venture Asia capability in combination, we can support very early to uh, pre-IPO and also uh, deep tech and sustainability impact to the mainstream. So all in all, uh, this is a, we think is very complementary kind of merger, almost merger. And, you know, this is a more like a buyout because uh, we both know the uh, all uh, partners and also employees because of the uh, history of our, you know, past. And then, so the the job is uh, founding uh, the, the Singapore holding entity, and we will keep it holding entity to develop the uh, ecosystem for Pan Asia, uh, which means basically harnessing the like minded people, investors, and those advisors. And also, we try to utilize the AI platform to run the fund and also to run the ecosystem because we have been seeing that, you know. Uh, or we are saying that, you know, innovation, innovation, but if we get back, you know, investors, uh, you know, behind, mostly manual and then very old style. I think now time has come. We need to apply data and the AI to support, you know, the humans to make a better investment and also better support. So age of is focused that on that. That sounds a little dangerous, like you're putting VCs out of a job. A little bit, but, you know, VC <laughs> can find the new pathway. And then, but some left behind VC could be, Unfortunately, outside of this room, this room, fine. Oh, okay, yes. Nobody here is going to be out of a job. But uh, actually, later today, we'll hear uh, Nuno. I'm not sure if he's here, but Nuno Gonzalez uh, will also be talking about using AI automation in venture. Um, when you guys talk about Pan Asia, can we maybe dig in a little bit there? Is this yeah, yeah. is not just Japan, okay, okay. East Asia. This is Southeast Asia, South Asia, China. What what is part of that? I think it's our thesis that, you know, the global startup target, of course, but who are interested in Asian expansion or Asian market, including Japan, but also Korea and also other uh, Southeast Asia countries, because uh, uh, obviously uh, market growth will come from Asian countries, of course, but of course, you know, uh, innovation would come from anywhere around the world, in, including, of course, uh, Asia, uh, but uh, startup itself will be a global so in that sense, you know, we're going to find the uh, best of the best uh, startup. And yeah, uh, the, the point is, uh, instead of the focusing on the domestic uh, geographic area, uh, we will focus in on the Asian startups who like to go global or the uh, global a a Western startups uh, who like to entering into the Asian market. That's it. So we won't invest to the domestic startup mm -hmm. in each country at all and but uh, very few startups are now going global in asia so uh we will develop uh, we will build the some the platform and ecosystem so that they can go global easier uh, or bigger so that's what uh, uh, we will do in uh, through under the age yeah. of and and then also a key will be uh AI automation, data infrastructure, because those are very common across the countries, right? Doesn't matter from a Silicon Valley or Asian startup, they need a common resources and common sort of a technology to start a startup. Obviously, that's why um, we, we are not actually a VC. VC is more like a creating a new type of the VC. Money was just part of that. Most important part will be more support of the technology support. And also, uh, you know, the uh, other type of the so business development. Software stack, not just capital stack. Yeah. The, so, for example, Dave, you are familiar with uh, the investment in Silicon Valley, right? And the, the the investors are very decisive and very quick to decide and invest quickly. Uh, so within a few weeks, uh, the lead investors will syndicate the investors and the uh, uh, to to uh, to invest uh, to to create a term sheet and uh, uh, and so on a contract uh, so that the startup can go faster and quicker. But in Asia, uh, that kind of things doesn't happen because uh, because there are so many reasons. But uh, the major well, one of the major uh, issue is uh, they are not familiar with uh, uh, that kind of speed. So uh, and also the lack of the knowledge and the know-hows. So uh, uh, that's why. Uh, uh, but I don't think they can catch up. The Asian investors can catch up to the Silicon Valley speed. So uh, uh, 
uh, instead of catching up, uh, we will build a new uh, AI powered uh, information platform so that the uh, investors can catch up very quickly about the, the latest information and also they syndicate uh, the group of the investors very quickly. So that's what I'm thinking. So it's a kind of the leapfrog. Yeah. Yeah. For the Asian industry. investors. Yeah. Yes. And also, obviously, as uh, uh, Mark also shared, the secondary market is important. And yeah. we, we also think about to create a secondary, but a secondary should be, you know, we don't, we cannot sell the our precious startup, you know, stock to unknown people, right? So that's why community is important. Once we have a community and the series of the investors can line up from uh, early to later, and in between some positive, proactive secondary can be created, Maybe again, twenty percent can be shared, passed to the next guy, and the next guy will fund, right? But I think we need to have a like-minded people together. Otherwise, it's not not possible. So that sounds like maybe an internal secondary platform for your entrepreneurs to have some diversification. Is that kind of that's also a pet plan? Okay. So, it, so if you are uh, thinking of the creating a new platform for secondary trades, uh, we are more than happy to be connected, of <laughs> course. Or if you guys. I have a nice technology or uh, ideas. Yeah. Uh, we are more than happy to be connected because I don't want to, you know, dominate or the, the enclose the community or deals. But I like to open up mm -hmm. to the like-minded people to because uh, our ultimate goal is not to uh, make a big returns, financial returns or something like that, but to create a, a nice uh, instrument uh, to support the great entrepreneurs and grow bigger and faster. So that's our ultimate goal to, you know, so to, to change the world better. So uh, so that's why um, I, I like to make that that kind this kind of network or community as open as much as possible. Mm. Yeah. So so that's why this is like our vision and drive a positive social change through alpha startups. We name the so such what, kind of what's startup. What's an alpha alpha startup? Uh, Alpha is actually coming from Taizo again. Taizo yeah, watched the uh, movie uh, on the train and then, you know, everything everywhere. Wait, wait, wait. Which, which movie? <laughs> everything everything everywhere. Oh, everything oh, everywhere. Oh, of course. This is it. <laughs> and, uh, because it's a creator foundation, Great starting movie, point. The and then we are looking for a startup who are creating a new kind of a chapter of the industry or vertical and starting point, right? That's why we, we like to make it our startup. And then we did already such kind of investment through Mesoto because when we started Mesoto as a family office setting, so no um, investment behind. That's why we had a kind of freedom uh, thanks to that setting. And that's why we intentionally experiment investment here and there very crazy, totally opposite from market. And then as an experiment, and then seeking 10 years kind of return on investment. <laughs> that was crazy, obviously. You know, that is not great strategy, but uh, no one can do it because uh, most of the cases, uh, LP wouldn't, you know, arrow such kind of... Zipline is a super cool company. I, I saw that and I should have invested. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy because at that time, it's a drone, it's a, you know, everywhere. And then these none of like them can... Glider, like, like rocket, they shoot them and yeah. then they deliver medical and other supplies yeah. in Africa and other places. Yeah, they went to Africa first and then coming back to the U.S. right now. So we are looking for such kind of rare species, uh, but a more we like to find. And then basically cross-border basis and out of side of thinking and also cutting edge um, technology and impact and also a uh, hyper return investment. So at least we can find a one or two or three. I think it's we can find 10 or 20 or more. So that's our kind of the belief. What, what stage are you guys looking at investing for these uh, companies? From now, I think it's as uh, Misoto has been investing super early, but now we are looking for a late seed and also series A to pre-IPO. Because uh, we like to create a network with uh, accelerators, incubators, and other investors to create a community, mm -hmm. not just by ourselves. That's why. Okay. Yeah, especially in Asia, uh, we found that uh, uh, seed investment is now uh, everywhere in each country. Pretty decent available. Yeah, pretty decent in these days. But uh, uh, Series A or B, especially B stage. Especially B, yeah. Mm. Yeah, very few pe investors uh, can can uh, take a lead. So this is like $10, 20000000 million checks and up? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously uh, the name of fund is uh, Alpha Fund or Alpha Startup Fund and community. 
So uh, get together, you know, like-minded people. And as I mentioned, the invest investors, advisors, even researchers, and also corporate partners, especially Asia, conglomerate improvement is very important because in order to expand the business without conglomerate, it's not possible. And also family offices. Uh, in Japan, it's not so kind of popular, but uh, obviously, as you see, a lot of family offices who got the uh, wealth uh, because of the uh, country development. So, and and then uh, again, you know, the we like to provide a AI platform to run this community and also fund, and together with the like many people to create a new kind of chapter for Asian market. That's that's uh, basically the yeah. And then three co-founders. Uh, can I ask you maybe a question about that family office component? So I think one thing that's always puzzled me is there's a tremendous amount of wealth in Japan. I, I think probably maybe second or third uh, after China, US in terms of billionaires and millionaires, like a lot of wealthy people in Japan, but relatively conservative investment strategy, uh, not even as much in, you know, even just stocks and bonds, but certainly not very much in alternative assets. Do you see that changing? Is that something that you guys are going to try and help open up more? Yeah, um, especially second generation, third generation, we have met many, many uh, family office guys, maybe 30s or 40s. They're boring on you know traditional investment, real estate or palm oil, you know, all those things, right? Of course, father made a huge wealth because of that. But second, third generation looking for something different, you know, asset uh, class, and also something uh, good for the future and next generation. So that's why we believe not everyone, but part of that. Um, still, uh, in Japan, especially in Japan, uh, family offices are not uh, very, uh, you know, uh, keen on uh, the investing to the startups by themselves. Uh, right. But I, but in, in my opinion, uh, it's because of the lack of the knowledge and know-hows. So uh, uh, I'm also the one of the family member office. Yeah, so you're talking about yourself. Some family, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, and I started investing to the startups uh, 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 as a family office, and then so uh, next month uh, the Mizuho Bank will uh, will hold a. Uh, uh, the big meeting uh, for the family offices in Japan. Mm -hmm. So especially the new successors, younger generation of the family offices. So uh, I will explain, uh, I will share the, my lessons learned and the, so why I'm, I'm investing to the, to the startups as a family office. And so, and, and so that the, uh, I can stimulate uh, the, them to, to get in, uh, interested in it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of education is very, very important. But, but you also had a huge diversification strategy for your own investments. I, I don't know if most family offices can do 100, 150 startups, certainly not 70 no. VC funds. Um, is there a way that you can help them have yeah. a more diversified portfolio strategy? Or? Yeah, good question. So um, so I, I like some next month, I, I'm, I'm supposed to, to tell to, to them that, that, of course, you cannot do it by yourself. Uh, so you should... You should involve the very good partners, which means that uh, the the next generation venture capitals. Maybe you could help them start a fund of funds to invest in emerging. Oh yeah, uh, that could be yeah, that could be the, the great way. What a great idea! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and yeah, we have actually one of the startup which provide a kind of a private syndication to the you know our VC or family office, and we're gonna have a partnership with them. Of course, you know, um, as Taizo mentions, other platform will be welcoming. Because uh, we don't want to own everything, rather this is kind of a hub to connect the uh, like many people and also platforms. But actually, I like to emphasize to the family office people uh, that uh, uh, not only for the financial returns, since you are you have a wealthy uh, assets, uh, you should invest. Uh, uh, you should contribute to the society by investing to the the great young entrepreneurs who are changing the world better. So that could be the greatest, uh, one of the good noblesse of reach uh, for, for the family office to contribute to the society. I think that kind of story could be appealing to them. So, uh, uh, I, so because they're not the you know professional business person or the investor. 
So I like to tell that kind of story, uh, inspiring story for them to to wake up as a great contributor to the society. Mm. Mm. And also part of this community platform, we uh, put the knowledge sharing kind of education to investors. So uh, some of investors are still new to this kind of, uh, you know, the deep tech and also all those uh, latest innovations. That's why it's also important to share such a knowledge to those people. And then on top of it, uh, this is just uh, interesting, uh, one of the interesting example, but uh, we are developing the uh, the AI, generative AI, uh, who learn my uh, thoughts and uh, <laughs> knowledges. Okay. So yeah. uh, we call it the mini Tizel AI. Yeah. We have a prototype. Well, mini, I think, mini, you know, mini. it only makes sense because you have AI in Tai Zo. <laughs> <laughs> it's already AI. Tai Zo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, for example, this, there are so many young people who like to access to me and, hey, Tai san listen to my, my presentation, but I cannot uh, deal everything. So uh, please uh, talk to talk me, to my me, me. <laughs> But actually, quite accurate answer we can find. We we are testing already. Yeah, and then almost maybe eighty eighty percent similar <laughs> response. And then uh, give the nice feedback to to them. And then actually we are testing, and then it's getting better and better day by day. And then I, I was very impressed at all. Oh, you you are doing the very good advice. <laughs> what are you saying exactly? <laughs> I mean, if you my, need to give them some harsher advice, you can use me to move in a little bit of AI and just give them a hard time. Well, Tyson is very generous. That's why yeah. I'm pushing always sometimes a great. Too, sometimes too nice. <laughs> and then eventually we will open up this technology for free uh, as a kind of the open source to even to the founders. So founders will make a pitch by AI. <laughs> Yep. And the uh, investors will listen. Uh, the, AI, the investor AI will listen and, and so we're they all gonna, dialect. We're all going to be out of jobs very soon. Yeah, entrepreneurs too. Uh, well, yeah, don't need to yeah, rig work like uh, checking emails every day. Try to find a good deal from the emails. That's something wrong, right? Why are we are spending tons of time? I, I'm ready for that day. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then that eventually the mini AI will notify that hey you should differ, definitely meet the real that guy. <laughs> okay. And then hey nice to meet you and get, have, have a coffee and talk. Yeah. Uh, personal but, but things uh, to become a friends. That's the uh, important role for the real pe person. Yeah. You, you sometimes, you know, they've noticed that, you know, one minute, oh my God, this is the wrong target, right? But you should continue the conversation. <laughs> And next 30 minutes or so, and then they're so excited. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, from the beginning, say no, right? But cannot say no. It's something quite wrong way, I guess. <laughs> so start with the AI for all the bad meetings. And then <laughs> exactly. like, good. only the good meetings to make it to That's you. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. That's a good way with using AI. Yes. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Mm. And then uh, since already uh, necessary discussion will be made by the AI each other, uh, all we have to do as a real person, real investor or real founder is uh, to become a good friends. And then, uh, for example, if I found a very nice co company, for example, hey, Dave, uh, so you, you, we are a good long, uh, long time. We are good friends, right? And you trust me and I trust you. So I found the amazing company. So I would definitely invest. So why don't you? And then me, maybe you will join, right? I'm already here. Right, so so this kind of thing is most important communication between the like-minded investors or founders, because of, in, we, investors and founders are the you know allies. So we should definitely get together and create a new innovation to change the world better. So that's the that's the, the you know goal. Mm. So we should ally, right, together. So so mean become a the, you know comrades is get getting not to know each other personally. So that's the most important way, yeah. thing. Yeah. So reasonable discussions that, hey, uh, so what is the, you know, why year on year growth or, or what's the number of the uh, lifetime value or the conversion rate? So that kind of things will be made by the AI. It's good enough. Yeah. You don't have to ask that kind of silly, silly, silly questions by ourselves. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, uh, we are uh, underneath maybe a sneak peek is that, you know, the AI will actually shape the pitch deck 
in between founders conversation. So in that sense, we don't need to see, oh my God, pitch deck, right? Rather, they already done sort of a several session in between. And then from the beginning, nice sort of pitch deck will come up, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong, right? This sounds really amazing. Where do I where do I sign up for this? <laughs> very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very uh, soon. We will open up to everybody. And uh, so people coming here today, you you guys have, have a very good eyes because uh, Japan is a sleeping beauty. And uh, very few people are interested in, in investing to the Japanese startup so far. But uh, uh, finally, in my gut feeling, because I was born and raised in, uh, keep observing the Japanese ecosystem for more than three, 30 years. And then finally, finally, the, the Japan is waking up again. Uh, so uh, so you you guys are the good, uh, so, so Japanese old establishments are loggers, but uh, uh, you <laughs> guys could be the, the leader uh, or the first mover to change the Japan uh, uh, to newly. So uh, I think we, we should definitely get, so since you have a good eyes, you have a good sense uh, to identify the new new symptoms. So uh, I, I'd like to get connected to all of you guys uh, so that we can create a, a, a new chapter of the Japan and Asia. Well, that's great. I think uh, we'd love to have you come on one of our next 42 Geeks trips. I, I oh, think yeah. Uh, actually, I believe Chuck's going to make an announcement uh, where our next trip is going to be end of February, early March to uh, Indonesia. Uh, okay. And so would yeah, be great I will if join. you want to join us. Yeah, so that's great. We can go find some startups in Asia. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a break for lunch uh, of about 45 minutes, and we'll get started again back at 1 o'clock.